The migrant crisis, election legislation, and the state withholding federal funds. Just some of the policies a bipartisan group of county executives are calling on the governor to address. The group, which includes Albany County Executive Dan McCoy, say these issues are costing taxpayer dollars and infringing upon home rule. CBS 6's Tom Eschen spoke with county leaders about this today. He joins us now from the live desk. And Tom, what have you learned? Well, this group, first of all, we heard from today, representing all areas of the state, too. Some who currently house asylum seekers, others who are open to refugees, and others who have closed their doors. Tonight, we asked them if their measures are affected and if they're sustainable, too. Over the last few months, we've seen counties across the state issue states of emergency relating to the relocation of asylum seekers. It's left to the localities to, to take care of this crisis, and we need to treat it like a national disaster. With the most migrants outside of New York City, Albany County's Dan McCoy issued a state of emergency requesting communication. He says that part has improved, but more is needed long term. But we need a plan. And that plan really has not materialized. People talk and talk, and the federal government hasn't addressed this issue. Unlike McCoy in Albany County, Orange County's state of emergency prohibited hotels and motels from accepting contracts to house migrants. We had the first buses come to Orange County. We were ground zero. But some of my other colleagues that beefed up their emergency policies have been successful. I asked the group if this was sustainable or if they would create a universal resolution on how to handle any relocated individuals moving forward. We need to have a federal policy. We need to have our president take action to stop the flow. And that will then enable us to deal with what we have now. In the meantime, Albany County will continue to be one of the few counties with open arms. But as he's mentioned before, County Executive McCoy says they need resources not just for the new faces, but the current residents as well. We have a homeless <laughs> crisis going on. We have a shelter crisis. I had eight shelters in my county. I'm down to five. I got 128 kids under the age of 18 living in shelters. Now, I'll have more on some of those other topics on my Facebook page in just a little bit. One point they made, too, was that that $1 billion in the state budget for the migrant crisis went right to New York City. So states of emergency were declared to also help gain control over their current capacities and resources. For example, we've seen in Schenectady County cite their lack of housing and their emergency order. Monty. And Tom, is there any concern from these leaders regarding proposed legislation to override these declarations? I heard confidence today moving forward. They reference courts ruling in their favor, along with lawsuits against the orders recently being dropped by New York City. One wild card here, though, could be the federal government. I've heard officials say they believe if a federal site is chosen, that could, in effect, override maybe a county government there. Back to you guys.